Hello and welcome to Sparks Live with me, Chris Baber. As you may know, I'm a chef and I work with M&S to create recipes that are easy, but most importantly, delicious for you to eat at home using the best quality ingredients from fresh and all around the store at M&S. Now, you may notice I'm here on my own tonight. My good friends, April and Andy, they're having the night off and they deserve it. They work really hard. Andy, I know you're watching. The one good thing about this means I've got the biggest biceps in the room tonight because it's always hard work when I'm with you. I tell you, I, I need to, well, I just need to get the gyms back open. Anyway, let's talk about the food. I hope you're cooking along with me tonight. And if you are, you are in for a real treat. We're going to be doing my smoky, no chorizo, Cajun style rice. And we're going to be showcasing these fantastic Plank Kitchen, no chorizo puppies. This is from the M&S Plank Kitchen range. Now they're packed full of garlic, roast red pepper, smoked paprika. And if you've never shopped from Plank Kitchen or any vegan range before, this could well be the product that's going to change it for you because it certainly did for me. Fantastic. Now, one other thing to mention, the chat bar is open tonight. And if you've got any questions, fire them through. I will answer the first one now. Yes, everyone, I am single. So we've dealt with that. Uh, so yeah, keep your questions going. If anyone's pre-chopped their veg, gold star. If not, we'll do it all live together. I'll take it fairly slow and there'll be plenty of time for us all to keep up. We'll pop the ingredients up on the screen now and we'll have a little run through the ingredients. So we've got peppers, onion and celery. We've got some spring onions. We've got some parsley. We need a little bit of oil. We've got Cajun paste and obviously our plant kitchen, no treats or puppies and some long grain rice. So really easy, accessible ingredients. We're going to get started. First thing we need to do, I'd say pop your pan on the heat now. You want to get large nonstick frying pan just over a medium heat to get going. And then we're onto our rice. Now I've pre-rinsed my rice. And the reason we rinse the rice is to get off any excess starch. Now, if you've got loads of starch in there, you're going to end up with What's the word? Claggy. A really claggy recipe. And that's not what we want. It'll be a bit like a savory rice pudding. And I don't want that. I want light, fluffy grains of rice with all those flavors of the chorizo and the Cajun paste. So pop your rice in a sieve. Go and give that a good rinse under the tap. And again, if you've done it already, that's a head start. And you just rinse it until the sort of water runs clear. And this is one of my weekly recipes. We've got recipe cards in store, feed your family for 12 pounds every month, four recipes available. And this is actually an eat well recipe. The little sunflower logo, we talked about that before. Anything with that on, you mean you can be confident in picking it up or shopping the ingredients knowing it's gonna be a healthy choice for you and your family. Okay, first little bit of chopping we need to do. A plant kitchen, no treats or puppies. You can just literally flip them out onto the board. And we just need to cut through them. So you can just keep them all together and just run the knife through. I'm doing sort of half centimeter thick. If the kids want to get involved, you could use kitchen scissors for this to make it a bit safer. Give it a snip through. And you don't have to be precise with this because it's going to break up a little bit in the pan. And you can see there the texture of that, like chorizo. And it will break up a little bit in there. And actually, we want to break it up because we want all of the flavors to be released uh, from this chorizo. So splash of oil into our pan now. Medium sort of heat, just a little bit. There is some fat in these, but this just gives it a head start because we want to get some crispiness and caramelization on there. And you slide all of that in. And you'll hear a little sizzle. And just get your wooden spoon and start to give that little stir around. And we'll keep an eye on it. And honestly, as soon as that hits the pan, you can really start to smell that smoked paprika and garlic. Delicious. Give that a stir through. And there's a few of you are wondering tonight, Susan, I know you were wondering, am I going to be seen? No, it's just me. It's not like a Zoom chat. We can't see you at our end. So you don't need to get your makeup or anything for this. Anyway, give that a little stir through. And then we're going to get onto our prep of the veg. So we've got a couple of sticks of celery. Chop off the end. And I guess here's a top tip. Work smart at home. I always keep a little bowl to put our waste in. So anything you're not going to use, you can just pop in there. Take the ends off. And then you can just slice the celery. Sort of thin strips. 
And you see how I'm holding it almost like a claw? And I'm running my knife against my fingers there and just sort of guiding my fingers back. And that is the safest way, especially any young'uns, kids that are starting to learn how to cook and chop veg. Getting into good habits like this just makes cooking easier and safer, okay? And if you've got your chorizo in the pan, the smell, if we add smell of vision well, we don't really need it tonight if you're cooking along. You can smell it live, but if not, we're going to share all of the recipe details afterwards so you can give this a go. Cut through our celery. Just some thin strips. And then we'll get onto the peppers. Snip off the end. And again, just discard anything you don't want. And we can just cut around and remove the stalk and all the seeds. That can come out. And we just cut this into sort of a rough dice. You don't need to be precise here. And there's a question just popped in. Uh, can you use a Cajun spice mix? Absolutely. Just add, say, a tablespoon of that, and you can add a little bit of tomato puree, and that's going to give you a really similar flavor to our Cajun spice mix. And someone else is asking right now, how long did it take me to get good at chopping? Do you know what? Not that long. It's just a case of practice. The more we cook from scratch, the more confident we get in our abilities in chopping and prepping. So practice makes perfect. But don't rush it because it probably won't be vegan if you end up with your fingers in there, right? So take it steady. You can see the colors here already. And we're going to get onto our red pepper next. And I've had it packed through from the MS Nutrition team. It is packed full of vitamin C, red pepper. So that is always good to know when you're doing meals for the family. Okay, enough of that. And this sort of like an all-in-one rice dish like this, it's a great way to get the kids eating a bit more veg rather than just serving up some boiled vegetables, actually incorporating it with other flavors like spice in a, in a rice dish. Fantastic. Let me just, let's have a little stir of our chorizo there. You can see we're getting some lovely caramelization on. And this is sort of releasing any natural sugars. And that's going to give us a sweetness. The more color we get, the more flavor we get. And that's not just with chorizo. That's with things like onions and peppers and carrots. The more color, more flavor. Obviously, you don't want it black. You don't want it burnt. But just that golden, golden brown is what we're looking for. And you'll notice the, the oil has been released from that. And it smells so good. Let's give that a trim through. Hope you're all keeping up there at home. Any questions? Um, here's a question. What did I grow up eating? So a lot of people ask me, oh, they just assume I'm from like a family of foodies because I work in food and we had like cookbooks from Morocco and spices from our travels. There wasn't really any of that. We grew up eating proper home-cooked food. My mum and dad can cook, great cooks. But it was just your spag bowls, your roast dinners, curries, fish pies, all the stuff we love, like bangers and mash. Um, and, ooh, let's have a look. Another question popping up. Can you post this online? Yeah, the recipes are online at the minute, so you better find them. And we will share this recipe just after. And another thing that I grew up eating that I love, I think it might be a bit of a northern thing, something called a mince dinner, which is basically mince cooked with onions and a rich beef gravy. And you'd serve it with potatoes, throw a few peas in. You can do some carrots on the side. And then I really don't know why, but mint sauce on the top. Delicious. If you want to see a mince dinner, that's a proper family dinner. I'll get one done for you. There's another question coming up. Sue's asked again. The recipe is online as we speak for this. You just peel off our onion skin. Into our bowl. And I think when you're at home, just simply doing this, it just keeps things tidy. You don't want um, peel and things everywhere. The cleaner, the more easy it is. I'm going to show you how to chop an onion properly as well later on when we've got a bit more time when everything's simmering away. But this just needs to be kind of roughly, roughly chopped at this stage. And that's all of our veg prep done now. So one last stir through on this. And you can see the color on there. It's absolutely fantastic. 
and we won't need to add any more oil into the pan, but we will add all our veg. And look at the colors on there. So in we go with this. All the veg, all the color. It's all the good stuff. Let's not forget this is one of your five a day. And now we'll give it a little season. So a little bit of pepper. And again, I'm going to put a decent pinch of salt in, but it's totally up to you. This is all about how you like it at home. That is the joy of home cooking. You're in control of all the flavors. So if you like a lot of pepper, put more in. Stir that through. And the reason we add things at different times, we don't just chuck it all in. We're building different levels of flavor throughout it. So this is going to just sort of cook on a medium heat for four or five minutes just to start to soften the veg. Uh, we've had another question from Sophia. What's my favorite thing to cook? Do you know what? I don't have a single favorite thing to cook. I think the joy of cooking at home is you can cook different things every night from all different cuisines. You can sort of go around the globe in a week. You could go Italian, you go Indian, Chinese, Thai, Vietnamese. So I think I've got one favorite thing. It's more about who I'm with, what the occasion is. But yeah, th there's not one specific thing. But I do love to make a Christmas dinner. That's, that's just nice. But it's sort of the memories and things that go with food and the occasion. You might want to turn the heat up a little bit on the pan now because when we add things into a pan, the temperature will drop if what we've put in is cold. So you can just bring the heat up a little bit. And while that's cooking down, I'm going to talk about our Cook With M&S Cajun Paste. Now, this really is a, a shortcut in the kitchen. It's packed full of sort of chipotle chilies, oregano, cumin, uh, garlic. There are tons of flavors in there. You take the lid off. It smells incredible. And some people say, oh, well, you're not cooking from scratch. Well, you are. It's just we live busy lives. Anything like this for me, stock cupboard essential to make cooking easier, but most importantly, delicious at home so you can cook something great for the family. Keep on stirring that through. We'll give it another couple of minutes. Any questions coming in? Elliot, seven years old. How did I start cooking? So for me, do you know what? I think some of my earliest memories are in the kitchen, like helping my mum, and I'd be stood up on a chair. I think, well, from what my mum says, a blunt knife, chopping up mushrooms. Even if we weren't having mushrooms, my mum would give me mushrooms to chop. It's probably the easiest and most safest thing. And I really got into it. I don't know, I must be 10, 11 years old. I'd get in from school. I don't know, watch like Ready, Steady, Cook and just be fascinated by how you could turn some raw ingredients into something delicious. And for anyone that's getting into cooking and food, I think the best bit about it is the reaction you can give to people. So the first time you make a meal for someone and it puts a smile on the face and you realize it isn't hard at all to cook delicious meals from scratch, that's when you start to want to do it again, again. And Gene, can I eat this the next day? Absolutely. This will feed four very generously. So for me, the next day, you could simply reheat it and have the same again. But one thing I'm big on is no food waste for one and also transforming your leftovers. So this is going to be rice when we've got it all in. You could make a lovely burrito with this. You could put some, get a wrap, put some avocado in there. You could put some sour cream. You could even put leftover meat if you've got some ham. Roll it up and you've got like a lovely Cajun style burrito. What's the difference uh, between using red and white onions? Quite simply, the flavor. They're not worlds apart, but I would say red onion has just got a sweeter flavor. So that's sort of simple for that one. Red onion as well is great if you're doing salads and things raw because it's slightly milder. Show us, there you go. You can see the colors and you can also see the veg is actually starting to soften down. Let's just give that one more minute and then just to give you a recap of where we're at right now, we've sliced our no chorizo, chorizo, fried that off. We've got all of our veg in. We've seasoned it up. And now we're just softening, softening the veg. I think now it is time to add this stock cupboard sort of secret ingredient. And also this Cajun paste, we're using it in here tonight. There's loads of stuff you can do with this. I think keeping dinner interesting is one thing we all need to do because we're at home cooking more often than ever right now than we ever have been. And we can all get stuck in the rut of cooking the same thing over again. But do you know what? If you're making spag bol, give it a go. Put a bit of Cajun paste in. Make a, make a spicy spag bol. It's about building the confidence up just to try new things. Or if you're roasting a chicken, 
maybe roasting some chicken breasts or salmon, a little bit of that on the top or in some roast veg. It's so versatile and you've just got to be confident to give it a try. Anyway, in we go with this. Someone's asking, did I do Veganuary? Do you know what? I didn't do Veganuary, but I think one thing I'm mindful of is eating probably a bit less meat, but when I do eat meat, it's all British, and I try and keep it as local as possible. Um, but I am making a, a big change to buying things like things from the plant kitchen range because the products are fantastic. So one thing that blew me away was the... Ooh, the chicken tenders. You saw them on the last live or, or two lives ago. And that is a pea protein in sort of a Cajun crispy batter. And that is delicious. So the range is fantastic. But no, I still eat meat. I didn't do veganuary. No chorizo, pigs and duvets are probably the one product that really convinced me. There's a development kitchen in there. It's basically like the best sausage roll I've ever had. I went in, picked one up, had a bite. I was like... That's bonkers, that. Delicious. And then when you find out that it's actually vegan, you think, how did they do that? Well, that's the M&S magic. They did do it. So, yeah, I am eating more vegan products, but I am not vegan. And you can see the colors. And once the heat uh, has hit the pan with this Cajun paste, it really is starting to come to life. And that chicken product is no chicken southern fried tenders for anyone that wants to give it a go. And there's also someone asking, do I miss Andy? Of course I miss Andy. He's a great guy. Okay. But I'm not missing him tonight because I've got the biggest guns in the room. So, sorry, Andy. Right. That is in a good place. We're going to go in with our rice, which we've rinsed. And then we can just throw all of the rice in. Give it a little break up. And before we add our liquid, we want to stir this through and get each and every grain completely coated in all of the flavors. And you can really smell the smoked paprika, the garlic from the no chorizo, and that Cajun paste, everything in there is just coming to life. But you see, we've coated all of the grains evenly, and they're going to start to soak up the flavors. Because if you think about it, rice is fairly bland. It's, it's a flavor carrier. So that's why it's perfect to team it with big, bold flavors. I'm being asked, uh, can you freeze this? You could, but for me, I, I've eaten this fresh uh, or just the next day. Becky, Jess, and George, do I like potatoes? Do you know what? I love potatoes. And I think, <laughs> I don't know what it is about potatoes. People think they're bad because it's carbs. There's nothing wrong with carbohydrate. It's the primary source of energy for the body. We've got the long grain rice in here. So don't be afraid of carbohydrate. For me, it's about everything in moderation, portion control, portion size, Think about how active you've been in the day. If you've been really busy, done a long walk, you can have a bit more carb on your plate. If you haven't, if you've been sat around watching Netflix or whatever, you can put a bit more salad on your plate. It's just about being mindful, common sense approach to eating for me when it comes to healthy eating. Right, up with the heat, and we're going to add our water in. Pour it through, and we're going to get that up to a boil. The whole jar of paste did go in. So if you haven't got the whole jar in, get it in there. But if you were making a bit less, you don't have to put it all in. In with our water. Give it a stir through. And it might look like quite a lot of water at the minute, but rice is going to absorb all of the liquid. So let's get a lid on there. And we'll bring it up to the heat, and then we'll reduce it and simmer it down. So we can get rid of this. Now, I said I was going to show you how to chop an onion safely and properly, so I think now is the time to do it. Let's, have I got an onion? Yes, I have got an onion. There we are. So sort of top tips. On these Sparks Lives, I'm going to, every time I'm on doing a cook-along, I'll try and deliver something helpful for you that you can use in everyday cooking. So not just this recipe, but going forward, you'll be able to do this with all of your cooking at home. So start with the onion. seems to be the base. For most recipes, to be honest, number one, start by frying an onion. Anyway, these actually count towards one of your five a day. I don't think many people knew that. First thing we want to do is keep the root end on, and then we want to slice off 
this end of the onion, and then we flip it down with the root up. Now, the reason we do that is to stop it sort of rocking around. Quick questions come in from Katie. Is there a non-spicy version of this? This isn't really, really spicy. It's more like aromatic of heat. It's not like a chili, chili hot. However, if you do want it spicy, you could throw in some chili flakes or a bit of chili powder. You can really make it your own. Um, okay, so keep the root on, and then we're going to cut the onion down the middle like this into two, and then we can peel the skin off. And pop that aside. And keep this on, and I'll show you why in a second. Let's put that in there. And someone's asking, how did I get good at chopping onions? Well, when I first moved to London, I worked in a Michelin star Indian restaurant and with Indian food, you require quite a lot of onions. So especially when I first started there, I could be chopping onions for four hours um, in a row. Now, by the end of those four hours, I didn't know if I was crying with the onions or was, was I crying because I've actually just been chopping onions for four hours, but um, probably a bit of both, if I'm honest. Before I chop this, quick stir on that. You can see the heat is starting to come up. One little stir, and then we'll pop the lid on, cover it loosely, okay, so just loosely, and we can let a little bit of steam come up, but we can still keep a bit of the heat in. Okay, now back to our onion. Where do we start? We've got the root at this side, okay? You can see the root, and this is gonna keep everything intact. So we need to slice. I'm just trying to see that, there we go. And I'll show you what I'm doing. We're cutting like sort of half centimeter slices, but not all the way back. So you can see there, I'm only going to about here with it. So let's keep going. And then the reason we do that is because the root keeps everything intact. So you can see it's sort of like, it's all kind of held together. And then we can, if you're going for a fine dice, what you need to do here is basically cut into the onion, being careful. And if you're not going for a fine dice, then you can skip that step. But then again, like I said, you always want to use your knuckles as a guide and you're, you're basically running the knife up and down and bringing your hand back. So down we go. And we can go all the way back through the onion until you get to the root. And then we can flip it over and actually just go around the root like this and discard it. You don't really want to eat that bit, but that makes chopping it really easy. So that is sort of finely chopped onion for you. And then I'll show you how to slice it finely as well, because different recipes require different styles of chopped onion. So some say, oh, that's a fine dice. Some might say finely sliced. So similar sort of thing. You can actually take the root off if you're just doing the finely sliced. And then this is the key. So this is what you need to get good at. It's not just onions. This is all veg and all chopping. I think for the safest method, literally just running using your knuckles as a guide because if you're holding it like this you can cut through your fingers so confident strokes down and you're just running your fingers back and then once you get to the end you can flip it over give yourself a bit more space and i'd say big top tip is make sure you've got yourself a really sharp knife the sharper the knife i would say the safer it is because you don't need to apply as much pressure so if you get a really good knife from the mns cookware range you just let the weight of the knife and the quality of that blade slide straight through the onion. It makes your life so much easier. And with the whole tears thing, the sharper the knife, the less tears because it's a blunt knife which causes the spray from the onions to uh, come up in your eyes. Okay, let's have a little stir of our rice. I'm just going to have a little look at the screen. A couple more questions popping up there. Is the rice pre-cooked? No, it's, um, it's not pre-cooked. Okay. And Scarlett is asking, when I was cooking uh, with my mum and chopping up mushrooms, did I used to nibble on them? Absolutely. There was no waste in my house, and there shouldn't be any waste for anyone. I think we've got to make the most of our leftovers. I've been talking to someone today about leftover things or what to do with things like herbs. We're going to chop some parsley later. If you've got any leftover herbs, my top tip, 
if they're starting to go off, chop them up finely, put them into an ice cube tray, put some water in and make yourself herb ice cubes. And then if you're finishing off a curry, a risotto, or any sort of dish like that, you can literally just pop these ice cubes in. Same with chilies, they can go in the freezer. If you've got cheese, you can grate it, put that in a bag, put it in the freezer. And that's great if you're doing lasagnas or white sauces. So you shouldn't be wasting anything. Give that a stir through. And this onion, I've chopped it. I'm actually going to bag that up and take it home. And I'm going to cook with it tomorrow. So let's get that in there. And then we can get on to prep our garnishes. John wants to know who's doing the washing up. It's me, John. I'm a dab hand at the washing up. I've got the marigolds in my backpack ready to go. And I'll be taking that onion home with me. When do the spring onions go in? So our spring onions and parsley is going to go in at the very end. And we're going to keep the spring onions raw because it just gives that flavor contrast. I quite like the sort of peppery heat of a spring onion. It's a great garnish. Obviously, you can fry them, but it's going to give a nice vibrant green color as well because I think we eat with our eyes. Someone's asking, can I use brown rice? You can certainly use brown rice. Brown rice is going to give a lot more fiber. However, it will take longer to cook. So you're probably going to need to simmer that for 35 to 40 minutes um, to get the same sort of consistency of the rice. Trim off our ends. And then for spring onions, generally, I don't wash them. I peel them. And if you're wondering how to keep spring onions stored at home to make them last longer, if you actually stand them up in a glass of cold water, they'll continue to grow and flourish. And... It just keeps them really fresh because, like I say, no waste. That's sort of my motto. You peel off the skin like that. Let's get rid of this. How is everyone keeping up at home? If you want a little recap, we've fried off our chorizo. We've added in our veg, our Cajun paste. We've washed our rice and added that. And our water goes in and now we're just simmering it away. I'm being asked by Catherine at the minute, how do I keep fit? Normally for me, there's quite a lot of stuff going on in the gym, but right now with lockdown, do you know what? I've just taken up walking like everyone else. I'm getting up at probably six o'clock and I'll try and do seven miles uh, before I start the day. And I think for me, exercise, not just the physical, but also the mental benefits. I'm just using that bit of exercise for that. But don't get me wrong, I'm looking forward to the gym opening. And I'm doing sort of like online classes. I've started doing new things. So I've done a bit of yoga, just trying something new, just keeping active. How long do we simmer for? 15 to 25 minutes. Now, everyone's probably going to be slightly different because all our pans are on different heats, different sizes. But what we're really going for is just wanting the rice to fully absorb all of the water. And you can do it to your own taste. So we're going to get to a point where we'll taste it. If you think that's right, how you like it, great. Or if it's still a little bit tough or al dente with a bit of bite, just keep it cooking a bit longer. That is the joy of cooking at home. You can do it completely to your own taste. All right, back to our spring onion. We'll just sort of slice those through. Like so. And then onto our parsley, we'll give that a chop. I mean, you could use coriander here as well. Any soft herbs. This is how I like to chop herbs if you're going really, really fine. And first of all, so many of us throw the stalks in the bin. There's so much flavor in the stalks. I think fair enough. If you're garnishing a dish at the end, pick off the leaves to make it look pretty. But if you're going to stir something through, don't discard the stalks. You've paid for it. You might as well use it. There's loads of flavor in there and goodness. So you wanna sort of roll them up into a tight as ball as you can. And the same principle we've been using all night, using our knuckles as a guide, straight down like this. All the way through and take your time with it. We're not on a generation game or something here. You can do it properly. And obviously, you can discard any big ones you missed. But then again, to cut it even finer, hand on top of the knife, really safe way to do it, and just run your knife up and down through the parsley like this. And there you go, perfectly chopped parsley. 
have another check on your rice and you can really see it's starting to soak it up. There's still a little bit of liquid in there, so we're going to keep that cooking a little bit longer. The smell, I'm telling you, is incredible. And while that's simmering, I want to talk about this recipe, but also all of the other recipes I'm doing. So every month you can go in store. This chap here does four recipes a month, and they can feed your family for 12 pounds with every single one, which is remarkable considering it's M&S ingredients. It really is. So I'll talk you through next month's recipes. They haven't gone out on social or anything yet, so you're getting a sort of sneak peek ahead of everyone. So first of all, we've got this mega mac and cheese. This contains broccoli. It's got peas. It's got cauliflower. Really easy to make. And you'll notice on the back, we've got a QR code there, so you can scan that and get more information on your phone. But we've got a really straightforward picture of all the ingredients. You can whiz around the shop, pick them all up, and then a really simple step-by-step -step method. And one thing, well, I know my parents have been doing it, probably because I'm just on the picture, but they've kept them at home, so you've got a little file of M&S ingredients um, and M&S recipes you can keep going back to time and time again. Let's have a look. We've got this lovely Thai prawn curry. And again, straight on the back, all of the ingredients, nice simple pictures. There's only five steps there. Couldn't be any easier. This really is easy home cooking. I'm just reading on the screen there. Henry's opened another Guinness. Cheers, Chris. Well, Henry, have a good night. Um, and this one here, curried cottage pie. So cottage pie, it's a family favorite. A little bit of spice. And this one's actually using um, an M&S Madras paste. So this is just a way to liven up those midweek meals. And again, step by step. And the final one, this is probably one of my favorites, Chinese clay pot rice. This beats the takeaway any day of the week for me. It's absolutely delicious. All the ingredients, step by step method. So don't forget to go and pick those up in store um, every month, in fact. Let's have a little check up on our rice. Someone's just asking, can you eat celery leaves? You can definitely eat celery. They are delicious in a salad or a lovely little garnish. Um, oh, Haley's accidentally put the spring onions in already. Don't worry, Haley. It's still going to be delicious. You might save a little bit of parsley to put on at the end. Okay. This is looking really good now. It's, it's getting there, so I'm going to have a little taste because we can adjust the seasoning up at this point. So let's get in there. Mm. Oh, I'm allowed to say it? I know I've made it. That's delicious. But I'm going to go with a little bit more pepper. And have a taste at home. See how yours is. And don't forget, we're going to liven it up with some lemon later on, just to freshen it up. I'm going to pop the lid on and just give that another couple of minutes uh, while I take a couple more questions. Also, if anyone's watching, have you made any of my Feed Your Family for £12 recipes? Let us know in the, in the comments tonight. Let me know what your favourite has been so far. Hmm. Well, oh, that is really, really good. Any more questions? Hmm. Still waiting on them to come through. Okay, so a little recap. We've done our plant kitchen, no chorizo puppies, delicious, fried them off, loads of fresh veg. And I used carrot, celery, and onion, which they call the sort of holy trinity of Cajun cuisine. However, if your kids or yourself aren't keen on peppers or onions, you can chuck whatever you want in. So you could use courgettes, you could use a bit of aubergine, carrot. If you've got some frozen peas and you want to boost up the veg intake, about now would be the time to throw in some frozen peas. So don't be scared to make these recipes your own. Mm. What do you do if it's too wet, Helen is saying? You can take the lid off like that and that's just going to let more water evaporate but also have a taste it might be wet at the minute but if the rice has still got bite to it it's still going to absorb some of that rice um, some of that liquid so don't be nervous about it mine's getting there let's have a little look you can see the colors it's sort of a drop in consistency i think another minute and that is good to go It really does smell good, that. Any more questions? 
Okay, Wendy's daughter Millie wants to know, how old am I and how long have I been a chef? So I'm 29. If you go into Google, it does say I'm about 58. So I don't know how I changed that. If anyone works there or knows anyone, I'm not 58. And a lot of people ask me, what's the secret to my sort of youthful looking appearance? Well, I think the secret is them putting the incorrect age on the internet. And how long have I been a chef? So for me, food was always a passion when I was growing up. And then I think six years ago, I won a TV show for Home Cooks that was on the telly, then ended up moving to London and worked in a few restaurants. And I realized my real passion is actually cooking from scratch and inspiring other people to cook at home. So yeah, I've been sort of in London doing this now, almost say five years, I love it. Ruby, can you use tofu? You can definitely use tofu. I would say use the firm tofu. Don't use the silken one because it'll probably break down. Tofu is a fantastic carrier of flavor. So if anyone's looking for ideas with tofu, all of the M&S pastes from the Kukuth range, you can literally coat the tofu in it, pop it in the oven or pan fry it, and you're going to be left with something delicious, which is like a fantastic substitute for meat if you're looking for it. I actually, M&S have got a soy ginger garlic paste. I got some tofu, coated it in, popped it in the oven, and it was like slicing through a soy ginger garlic steak when I was done with it. Really substantial, delicious. And the soya, it's really, really good for you. Okay, I think my rice is about ready. Ooh, Ingrid and Lauren. Can I have a dessert and start a recommendation for Valentine's Day? Yeah, you can actually. I think... Um, let me think. Well, it depends what you're into. I think you can't go wrong with a good chocolate brownie. Um, hmm. I'm going to need a good think on that. Starter and a dessert for Valentine's Day. You could always go for Fred. Fred's uh, dine-in for Valentine's Day. He's got some stuff coming up for there. That is about perfect now. What drink could you have with this? Whatever you like, I think. There's no rules. I think with wine, there's a lot of wine and things that will go with food or won't go with food. But for me, it's always about what do I actually like the taste of? That, that's the key. Um, I think a beer would be really good with this. I'd love that. Or a Chilean Sauvignon would probably work perfectly if you are into your wine. But whatever you like. I'll tell you what, really good. A ginger beer. That would be nice for this. Really, really nice. I'm going to turn that off the heat. We can give that a little fluff up with a fork now. And you can see just from rinsing that rice off, we've got these individually coated grains of rice. Yours might need a little bit longer at home. Okay. And we can throw in half of our parsley now. In it goes. And we haven't wasted anything there. The stalks are in. And you can throw in a few of the spring onions now as well, just to get the flavor all the way through. And again, just keep sort of fluffing it through with a fork. And then it is time to plate up. Sarah would like to know if I could do crispy dumplings with my minced dinner. You could do whatever you want with a minced dinner. Yorkshire puddings though for me are the one. And if anyone ever cooks too many Yorkshire puddings, you want to be using them as a dessert. So Yorkshire pudding, it's just a pancake batter. Try the next day cold with a bit of ice cream and a drizzle of chocolate or toffee sauce, something like that. Delicious. Or golden syrup. I'm going to get my serving plate and give this a go. Okay. Oh, I mean, the colors in there, it's fantastic. It really, really is beautiful. And if you've made this tonight, please do tag us in the pictures. Tag me, tag m and I would love to know what you think. And it, I think a dish like this, it just goes to show how easy it is to make the most amazing meals at home. When you've got quality ingredients like this, you don't need to do much to them. It's just a simple process and getting confident with your cooking at home. So let's go on with a little bit more parsley. We can throw a few spring onions on there. And a little wedge of lemon, maybe a squeeze of lemon over the top, and just a wedge on the side. Let me get a fork. And there you have it, my smoky no chorizo Cajun style rice. 
using that fantastic no chorizo from the plant kitchen range. I'm going to have to give it a go. Mm. Well, for the first time tonight, I'm lost for words. That is delicious. And I hope that becomes a new family favorite in your house as much as it is in mine. And I just hope you have a fantastic night eating food with your family. So I will be back with more Sparks Live cook-alongs with my Feed Your Family recipes. And don't forget, tag me and m &S in your pictures tonight if you made it. And I really look forward to seeing you all next time. Have a brilliant evening. I'm off for me dinner and to do the washing up. So have a good one. Mm, cheers.